The Italian Mafia, specifically the Sicilian-based Cosa Nostra, has a long and complex history that dates back to the late 19th century. It has well-established networks all around the world. They work secretively and exercise immense power. What are the insane secrets of Cosa Nostra? What is the untold story of this Italian Mafia? Cosa Nostra originated in Sicily as a response to the power vacuum created by the unification of Italy in 1861. The Mafia emerged as a way for local communities to protect themselves from a corrupt and ineffective government, and to provide alternative systems of justice and order. It has been involved in various illegal activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, racketeering, and money laundering. The organization has a hierarchical structure, with the highest level being the boss or capo di tutti capi. The Mafia have soon expanded beyond Sicily and into other parts of Italy, and later into the United States and other countries with large Italian immigrant populations. The Mafia's criminal activities included extortion, gambling, smuggling, drug trafficking, and murder, among others. During the 20th century, Cosa Nostra became increasingly powerful and influential in Italian politics, law enforcement, and other areas of society. The organization was involved in numerous high-profile crimes, including the assassination of Italian prosecutors and politicians who attempted to challenge their power. In the 1980s and 1990s, the Italian government launched a crackdown on organized crime, resulting in the arrest and prosecution of many high-ranking members of Cosa Nostra. The Mafia's power and influence have since declined, although it remains an active criminal organization. How does this Mafia work? The infamous criminal gang that has its roots in Sicily, Italy, during the middle of the 19th century is known as Cosa Nostra. The Mafia's origins can be traced back to the late 1800s, when Sicily was a poor, lawless island ruled by a succession of foreign powers. Although there have been various attempts to crack down on the Mafia, it still operates in certain areas of Italy and other parts of the world, including the United States. It's important to note that Cosa Nostra is an illegal organization, and their activities are not condoned by any legitimate government or organization. The Mafia began as a loose network of criminal gangs, which were mainly involved in protecting their interests and those of their members. However, over time, the Mafia became more organized and powerful, extending its influence into every aspect of Sicilian life, from politics to business. During the 20th century, Cosa Nostra evolved into one of the most powerful and feared criminal organizations in the world, with an estimated 5,000 to 6,000 members and associates in the United States alone. Members of the Mafia were known for their code of silence or omerta, which made it difficult for law enforcement to prosecute them. However, in the 1980s and 1990s, the Italian government launched a major crackdown on Cosa Nostra, resulting in the arrests and convictions of many of its top leaders. Despite these setbacks, the Mafia continues to operate today, although in a weakened arrangement. The legacy of Cosa Nostra is still felt in Sicily and beyond, as the organization has left a lasting impact on Italian and American culture and society. One of the most well-known episodes in Cosa Nostra's history is the so-called Mafia Wars of the 1980s and 1990s, which saw a bloody power struggle between rival factions of the organization. This period was characterized by a wave of killings, bombings, and other violent acts, which claimed the lives of many members of the organization, as well as innocent civilians. Cosa Nostra is one of the Italian mafias which exists in the world. There are several others, such as Camorra and Drangheta. These mafias have families within them. They work interdependently. One family may be higher than the other in planning, execution, and logistics. But the power dynamics change frequently. These families know that they need one another to exist. The Italian mafia is quite different from the mafias which exist in the world, especially when compared to the American mafia. Italians follow the old school and they follow the legacy of decades. The American Mafia expected a lot of respect in this profession, whereas in the Italian Mafia, respect is earned by every member. Who do you think could be a member of the Mafia? The captain of the Mafia will be also referred to as the boss. Certain people who provide advice to the boss are known as consigliers. Generals are the ones who deal with the projects and the money. They look out for future projects and deal with them. Lieutenants work under the general and they send the soldiers to the street to apply violence. They are the ones who execute the brutal blood project. The Italian Mafia is mainly made up of the family. As they lead an unpredictable life, the boss of the Mafia could face death at any time. They may not be able to get aid or defend themselves in such situations. 
Once they died, their position wouldn't stay vacant for long. The son of boss or any other close family member who is eligible enough to take over the position will be selected. They waste no time grieving for their losses, instead, they take the next step. If the boss is locked up in prison, then their position wouldn't be occupied by anyone. He will still carry down his role. It's very crucial to select the right person as they decide whether the mafia would grow further or diminish. The selected person has to be powerful, intelligent, and assertive. Only male Sicilian citizens are eligible to join Cosa Nostra. A candidate cannot be a close relative of or have any connections to a member of the legal profession, such as a magistrate or police officer. Men as young as 16 have been introduced. There is no set age requirement. The qualities of obedience, discretion, bravery, ruthlessness, and intelligence proficiency are rigorously examined in a potential mafioso. Even if he doesn't intend to become a professional assassin, he is almost always forced to murder someone as his final test. To demonstrate his sincerity and to compel him to remain silent, he committed the crime. For many street criminals, joining the mafia is a highly desired goal. Everyone respects mafiosi because they know that doing so could result in death at the hands of the offender or one of his or her gangmates. Mafiosos find it simpler to commit crimes, strike deals, and demand favors. A permanent member also has more flexibility to engage in specific mafia-controlled rackets. The Sicilian mafia was highly powerful in the 1950s. They know how to govern themselves and do not require any institutions. They disregard the government and rules. They behave according to their purposes. One of the reasons for the stagnation of Italy was this mafia group. The history of Sicily since antiquity is defined by foreign rule. Various powerful states tried to establish control over them, such as Romans, Srabs, Vikings, and Germans. The French Bourbon king controlled Sicily. Bourbons as well as most of the other dynasties followed a feudal system and established a feudal relationship. Feudal barons in the Catholic Church took control over most agricultural and productive lands. They were reluctant to give full ownership to the people. There was a significant change in society and the land distribution system in 1812. Earlier, the noble had to pass on his land to his firstborn, but with the enactment of primogeniture, a significant change has been brought. In the late 19th century, Sicily faced a lot of exploitation. The government couldn't protect the people of Sicily. The landowners had no other remedy but to turn to the local thugs and seek their help. These local thugs took advantage of the situation the moment they realized that no one was coming to provide the ladies with any kind of aid. They threatened the farmers, as well as the property owners, to be under them and be part of their lust for clientele. Fear crept in for them, and they had no other choice but to obey them. To avoid violent consequences, the landowners started paying these thugs ransom in exchange for protection provided to them. By 1865, these local groups had established themselves and they were known by all. The fundamental unit is referred to as a family, clan, or casca. Each family asserts its sovereignty over a region in which it runs its rackets, which is typically a town, village, or borgate of a bigger city. Although the public frequently refers to them as mafiosi, its members refer to themselves as men of honor. Mafiosi-style gangs were easier to organize in Australia, the United Kingdom, Canada, the United States, and South America by the turn of the 20th century thanks to widespread immigration from Sicily. To different degrees, these diaspora-based outfits imitated the customs and practices of their Sicilian ancestors. The organization and use of force to enforce illegal agreements and arbitrate conflicts between criminals constitute the main activities of the Mafia. As opposed to the police, the Mafia only protects particular clients who pay them for their services. Due to Mafiosi's extreme secrecy and lack of historical documents, it is difficult to determine how the Cosa Nostra organization came to be. They have a history of deliberately spreading untruths about their past, and occasionally they develop self-mets. Do you think the members of Cosa Nostra live among us? Do you think they lead a normal life as compared to others? Let us know in the comments.